Hi guys, today I wanted to talk through my April favorites. I kind of wanted to do this video differently than the way that I've done favorites in the past, which is just kind of like listing off products that brought value to my life, but actually kind of giving a fuller picture of just experiences that meant a lot to me this month. And some of those might've been receiving or like buying something that was special, but just all with the mindset of how it made my life better. I had kind of a different month too, because April's my birthday birthday month and um, you know I had family in town for that and Easter and everything plus we just moved to Nashville a couple of months ago and so we kind of have been treating it as being a tourist in our new town. Lots of different experiences have meant a lot to me this month and I just wanted to kind of run through them with you today and just kind of use it as a way to have a diary entry of sorts that I can look back on years later and remember what this moment in my life was like. The first thing that I really set intention on was listening to audiobooks. I really wanna hit my book goal this year. For me, that just meant more so reading and experiencing and learning more than actually opening up a book and reading it off a page. While I'm cleaning and cooking, I will be listening to my audiobooks. One that I've been loving so far is Outlander Book Six. You guys know how much of a fan of Outlander I am, so I'll leave that brief. The narrator is incredible. I will leave you guys a link to my favorite narrator and where you can read the audiobook version of the series that I love the most. And then also out of respect for what happened with Notre Dame, I actually used the audiobook version of The Hunchback of Notre Dame written by Victor Hugo. So that was really interesting. It was something that, you know, I was familiar with the Disney story and everything with The Hunchback, but actually going back to the Victor Hugo version was really interesting. And even though it's a fictional story, reading about it in the setting of Notre Dame was very, I don't know, I was able to respect it for what happened there and also learn a little bit of, not necessarily history, but the history of when it was written. And then also the version that I listened to was from Christopher Lee, who I'm really familiar with from Lord of the Rings being Saruman. And he was such an incredible actor and was able to narrate that so beautifully. It felt like I was listening to him actually act it out. And that brought a lot more depth to the story than if it was just reading off a page. Next, I've been really focused on expanding my accessories collection. That's really just as a broad range of how I've been developing my personal style. I started with not accessories hardly at all. Like I started with the bare bones of where do I need to start from? And if that's where you are today, I would definitely say to do what I did, which was pick out a very minimal color scheme. And I'm talking from day one and I went with black and white really, maybe just a little bit of beiges or browns that I could mix together well. And so I would use different things like a basic blouse and a pair of black silk pants, which I'm wearing today. And, and those types of things, if you buy them with quality, then you don't need to buy so many of them to begin with and you can wear them for several times and they don't wear out. So that's kind of how I started. Then I built from there with like outerwear and sweaters and things to wear in addition to that. Now it's a couple years later, almost to the day actually, that's weird to think about. So now I am really investing in what type of jewelry do I still need to my collection. Jewelry has been something I'm, I have been investing in along the way. From here, I'm really trying to curate that collection as well as purses and just, you know, knickknacks and accessories. One of those being a scrunchie. So scrunchies are a little bit less timeless per say, but it's just a very affordable thing that really makes a lot of outfits come together. And what I mean by that is when I was looking on Pinterest for some outfit inspiration, which you guys can see, I post a lot over there if you're interested, but I found that a lot of photos that were outfits that I loved were very basic. I'm talking like a cami and a pair of jeans, but I'm like, what makes that photo is that she's wearing a scrunchie on her arm or in her hair. Like that was a trend that I felt like that brings so much value and makes your style so much more effortlessly chic. So I went ahead and got one that was on Etsy that's 100% silk, and I'll link you guys down in the description where you can find it. Super happy with that one. And then also there were a few different pieces of jewelry that I wanna go into next. 
some of the more timeless pieces that I'm really excited about. These were gifted to me from Pamela Card. So this one I'm wearing right here is the springtime allegory necklace. I this is the part I love about her stuff is that she is inspired by museum pieces and old coins and anything that is from around the world inspires her work. So what this necklace represents is really inspired by springtime, which was Primavera by Botticelli. And it was just interesting to see the influences from that painting that she put into this necklace. One thing that I was doing research on with that painting is that there's this idea of a half circle, which is going around the head of Venus in the painting. And then also there's this shape represented throughout the painting where because it's springtime, um, every woman in the photo or goddess is pregnant. And so that's just another symbol there. This is a really beautiful piece though because it looks just kind of like luscious <laughs> and fruitful and, and playful, not necessarily perfect geometric. And then also it's got Again, a very organic piece with the pearl down at the bottom, which is about an inch long. All of them are, but then also they're all unique. They're gonna have different shapes. So I like that too, that it's one of a kind and it's very much like made to where you're wearing something that's unique to you. And I just love the art history behind that too. Another piece was this one, which was the Madonna necklace. It was the Madonna halo. So it looks a lot like her Magi necklace, but then it also has this little string of little dots all the way around it, which really looks like Madonna's halo in a lot of older paintings would look like there too. So more art history for you guys today. I just find that to be really inspiring. I have a background in design, but I don't, and you know, I've been in art and oil paintings for quite a while, but I'm no art history expert. And there usually is someone out there watching these videos too. Today. So if you know more about the paintings that inspired these pieces, I'd love to hear more about them in the comments below. And then one more piece that I am so thankful I didn't lose <laughs> was this ring that she gave me too, which was a signet ring. And it's got kind of like symbolically a little face on there. You know, a lot of signet rings, they used to be used to seal your stamp into anything like wax that you would send off as an official document. And so just to have something like a signet ring is very special in that way. What I mean by I'm so thankful I didn't lose it is that on Easter, I decided that I would wear it out then I realized that I really don't want to lose it while I'm like playing tennis and stuff I hit it so well and perfectly placed it so well that I thought I lost it and I found out where it was eventually I connected the dots and remembered where I hid it from from myself really so thankful <laughs> that I still have it because oh my gosh I would feel so bad and then something that's more on the trendy side and this is actually really affordable too it's from Etsy and it's a snake chain necklace so I love the one that I have that you guys have seen before that was from um, the Daisy brand that's a very like smaller snake chain this one is more for impact and it just has such a beautiful reflection on it and I've just been wearing it with layering other pieces with it is a really pretty look. There's times where with necklaces, a snake chain necklace looks really good with really casual outfits and it just gives a little bit of flair that you know jewelry can bring to an outfit without it feeling too ornate and so that's been fun to just kind of play with that as well so if i'm just kind of running around town and i don't have a beautiful outfit on i'm just kind of wearing you know a sweatshirt or whatever then snake chains are a really good option for that another thing that i have been investing time in is masterclass which you guys know it's like a place where you can take courses online for skills that are really cool and this isn't sponsored or anything it was just something that i felt like I wanted to actually invest in and kind of improve on things in my life. One is they have like all sorts of cooking classes on there that I haven't taken yet, but I'm really excited for that. I've been mainly focusing on the wonderful Natalie Portman and just learning from her on things like communication through her acting classes. I don't really have any career aspirations for being an actress, but just learning from Natalie Portman on how she moves around and uh, like when she's in character and the outfits that she's wearing can give a lot to how she's portraying 
her character. She talked a lot about that and then also just, you know, communication things like when she takes a breath or how she delivers an emotion has been really cool and just kind of helps me while I'm trying to like, even today like talking through a favorites video has some sort of ramifications of what I learned from Natalie Portman. And then also I was able to watch her Jackie movie. I rented that and I could see a lot of the th techniques that she was describing in her master class to then like talk through, like actually come through to life on stage or not on stage, but like in, on camera. I've just found her to be really inspirational and learning about how her techniques have influenced that has been really cool. And then also there've been amazing authors I've just started to crack open their courses on, on how they write. And I just find it all to be really inspiring. So spending time on that this month. And then because I've been faced with another birthday, <laughs> um, no, I'm actually, really pumped for that and I'm excited for the new year but some things that I've been prioritizing in my life have been reflective of that it allows you to kind of evaluate like where you're at so one thing that I've been prioritizing is a multivitamin and this one was actually recommended to me a few months back from my registered dietitian I went to her seeking advice about like how I kind of eat for what I'm going through with PCOS. And so this has made a big difference even when I'm like sick, you know, I can really tell a difference then where I can, I feel like I've just pumped with vitamins and I feel so much better. And why I have kind of shied away from multivitamins um, sometimes has been just because I feel like I always break out. And one reason that that could be is because iodine, some people might find that it breaks you out a little bit with, I don't really understand it all, but that has been something I've noticed. So if I take this, I don't break out ever. So I've been taking these probably like six months and I've loved them so much. I got some for Zach too. And he, get, he takes the kind with iodine and iron. We just kind of both have our own supplements. And I think for him, it's made a big difference in just like how he fights sort of things like infections and stuff. And then I've just been going to the gym almost every day or working out at home. My food's here, one second. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I've been going to the gym like every day and that's been so helpful because I've got one close by and just prioritizing that or else I'll just work out at home. I use all sorts of apps. I'll leave links down in the description if you're interested in what kind of apps I use for that. But just kind of prioritizing that has made me feel a lot healthier and just, I don't know, like I'm, I'm achieving something and having routine if you're new to your city or you just kind of feel like off, having routine has helped me so much. Another routine in my life that I am prioritizing is my nighttime routine. I'll leave this brief because I actually want to go more in depth with a nighttime routine video, but some pieces that have really helped me so far, my Belief eye cream. I, in the past, I've used this Belief cream, the Pete Miracle Revital Cream for my face, but I specifically bought the eye cream because I was so happy with the face cream. Next, I switched up my neck cream, and so I'm using this one that I can't pronounce by Tarte. It's just a neck treatment is what it calls it. So I really like this one so far. It's just been helping me to really evaluate the need for that. I used to use one that was by Paracone, and I just wanted to kind of try a different brand this time. This is what I'm using so far. I really love it. And you know, when you get to a certain age, it's never too late actually to start using a neck cream. And then, oh my gosh, I am in love with this stuff. It is an agave lip therapy. So you use it overnight and it just feels like a really dense chapstick, but more sticky than that. I wouldn't wear it during the day at all. And it's just made a big difference when I wake up the next morning. You guys know I have talked at length about how much I hate having chapped lips. It's a problem in my life. And so far this has been really good. So if you're like me and you have issues with that, definitely look into this. I'll leave a link down below. I'm gonna fly through these last ones because I feel like this is getting a bit long. <laughs> okay, so I have been focusing on my house this month. Uh, some things that have really come to mind have been I wanted to kind of redo my plates and 
saucers and mugs and all that in my kitchen because I've got open shelving now and I just want it to be more curated and something that will last a long time. So these are a couple of pieces from my sets of Buffalo China and I just really like how thick they are. Like it's something you'd find at a restaurant, like a nice restaurant and it's more of a natural color. It's not quite white. And then these cups have been absolutely perfect because I want something that's a little bit thicker. That's been really nice for some mornings where I just got a nice little cup of coffee. It's the perfect size. And then I also like to have thin cups whenever I have something like tea. And so this has been really great. I am just happy with finding something very like dainty. So I've got a set of these little teacups and then also some saucers that match it and it just looks so pretty. I posted them a picture of it like on my Instagram too. I think that having stuff like this makes my house feel more homey too. So yeah, the rest of the month was really just about being with family, spending date nights with Zach. We went to see 42nd Street at the movie theater and then we also were able to pick up some topiaries. Uh, that was a birthday present from my parents. And so just having those outside has been really nice. Spending time laying out in the sun and the beautiful weather. I got a new towel for that. That was really nice too. Just anytime I feel kind of like overwhelmed or stressed, I'll just go outside for a few minutes and like get it under control and then I can go back in and kind of tackle things. And then another thing for my birthday that I specifically requested was to pay off our debt. Like, so we're not completely debt free. We've got a little bit left, but just getting another thing taken care of and just kind of sorted brings so much like personal peace to my life feels so good. <laughs> Student loans are no joke. Other than that, it was fun to be able to try out some new cafes and also to attend the Nisolo event was so special. They treated me so nice. I was just able to have like a front row view of how Unspoken Podcast was there. They were interviewing the founder of Nisolo and so that was so much fun to be able to listen and observe all that. I will leave you guys a link to go watch a little bit of a clip from that. Um, I was able to get that in my vlog. So this whole month has been very fulfilling and new and different, much different than anything I've experienced before. So I'm just very grateful and I'm excited for new things to come. So I will see you guys later. I have a few videos that I have coming up that I'm so excited for and I'll see you then. Bye. You love dancing in the rain You never mind a cloudy day You make the world a better place Yeah, you love dancing in the rain